Lord for being here and everything that the Lord does for us. For me, your scripture, I'm going to try to make up something different. And I'm going to let you know, man. Appreciate everybody being here. I thank God for being here. I thank God for, we got a lot of dedicated people, please. So when I see through these hard times, when a lot of people choose to stay home and come on out, I sure appreciate you. I'm getting to think about, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll get ten good women to one good man most of the time. And, you know, it's like, you know, like they're just more, I right? you know, uh, I guess willing to let the Lord use them. Maybe. But uh, I thought a lot about uh, Gary Turner and Lonnie today and talked, uh, I thought through these hard times, you know, I, I thought how proud of them of them for coming. Because we sure need them. You know, I thought uh, I thought Lord added us two good ones. I sure appreciate them. And I know that, uh, I don't know about Big Lonnie, I'm sure he does, but I know that Gary back there ain't no doubt my mind's got breathing problems. He's got black lung working in the mind that long, he couldn't know. And, and I, but I don't know if he's missed but one. I don't, I, I mean, he just come right on. I appreciate that. I thank God for Big Lonnie. I thank God for men. That's being men. Amen. When you come Amen. to church and stand up and come and lead your family and I appreciate that. That's, that's what being a daddy is. That's what being a man of God is. Amen. These hard Amen. times, people chose these hard times to stay home. People chose these hard times to not do their job in church. I thought how good it was Sunday, Heather, to pray for your aunt, to lay hands on them. That's good. The devil's using this to hinder us from obeying God. You know, I tell you, if I catch this old terrible disease and, and it takes me out of here, I'm going where I'm working for anyhow. You know, I, I thank the Lord for everything. And the first scripture, we're going to turn to Luke 15. We all know to me. I'm going to try to bring, bring some different. I got a question the Lord asked, uh, you know, uh, give me the sort of, sort of the title. Answer this to yourself, just don't say it out loud. Does the say need saving. Think about that a little bit. I'm going to read to you about the prodigal son, but you know, so many times we read this, but there's another son just on down the scriptures in that we tend to forget. And this represents two different types of people in the church. The Lord, I, I was beginning to think about now the prodigal son, we all know about it. He had this. Let me go ahead and read it. So the younger of the men said unto his father, Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided to him his living. He divided, so he divided with somebody. And not many days after, the younger son gathered together, and he took his journey to a far country. And there were wasted his substance. Right, how you say it, Brother Blake? Uh, right, yes, sweet. I, I, I mess it up, boy. You don't notice it says the younger son. Yeah. And when he had spent all, there, they rose a mighty uh, <coughs> famine in the land. And began to be in want. I thought we can be in want for a lot of different things. That's right, though. But when there's a, I thought the Bible talks about being a famine in the land, but the, 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 I like that song, uh, uh, not for bread or water, but for the hearing of the Word of God. This is what the prodigal son, even though he spent all that he had, this is what he really was needing and began to be in want for. And so he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he sent uh, uh, his uh, sent into the fields to feed the swine, and he would have feed, he would have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. Yeah, amen. And he and no man gave unto him. This is a man that had everything. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Uh, whatever he had, his father divided him to his other son and gave him, and he went out. End of the world, and, and just wasted whatever the Lord, had, the, the Father had given him. Yeah. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants in my father's house has bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? Amen. How many people in a church today perishes with hunger? Amen. Hunger. Too many times we worry about what this flesh needs. Yeah. I thought if we was to give a spiritual man 
as much tension as we do the flesh of the man. How Amen. much better off we would be. How much right. better off we would be. This was a man that had everything that he needed right. 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 his father's house. Amen. Does the saved need saving? Think about that. He said, I will rise and go to my father's house. I will say, I, I, I say unto him, Father, I have sinned against him and before thee. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I love this. I'm going to try to bring something out different. I thought I'd, I'd begin to think, if I I don't like water, I can't swim, I, I pee, I, I thought, I, you know, uh, I thought I'm going to have a life jacket on, I ain't much of a lake person. But I'm sw I can swim probably about two minutes, and I, 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 I probably come to a funeral because I cannot swim. I'm terrified of water. But I was to jump off a ship, and, and they throw me a life preserver and save my life. What happens if I jump off that ship again? Amen. I'm going to need to save it again. Think about that. This was a man that had everything that he ever wanted, <coughs> that he ever could ask for. But he, he, but he took himself a journey to far country. He said, and he said, verse 19, he said, I am no more worthy to be called thy son, to make me as one of the hired servants. I thought, I thought about to, I've never backslid, and Lord knows I hope that I never do. But I've been cold on the Lord. But I thought how good it is after being cold on the Lord is when you get the feelings. Amen. There's no greater. I, they, they ain't nothing. It feels no better. This is the man. Listen to what he was feeling like. Now he felt all, and he felt so ashamed. He said, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the hired servants. I thought this was a man had been away from his father, been away from everything that he knew. He just wanted to come home. Amen. Amen. How about how? Think about that. This man was after all everything that it was took from him. He spent everything that he had. And I thought, you know, he said, I, he said, he came to his senses. He said, I know what I must do. He said, I got to go back home. And I know I, I'm going to try to get in this. I thought. Uh, when I was a drug addict and, and, and things, I know I tell this a lot, but uh, but I always know that I could go home and get something to eat, you know, and, and I thought, it, it's a terrible thing to be hungry. It's a terrible thing to be out in this world. As a Christian, it's a terrible thing to be away from the Lord. I'm telling you right now, this day and time, it's a terrible thing to be away from God. I'm telling you. He said, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Yeah, he said, make me one of the higher servants. He said, just let me come home. Amen. amen. The devil tells people that they can't come back home. Amen. 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 He tells, okay, let me read on. He said, he said, he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Lord, have mercy. I thought, how good. I can read that. I've read it for 20-some years. Yeah. And it gets sweeter every time I read it. Oh, man, this man, he, his father was a looking for him. Amen. I thought, Lord, if my children ever got away from me and out in this world, then there'd never be a day that I wouldn't look for them to come back home. Amen. Amen. And they would always have a home with my family, you know. Don't matter what they done, how far they went, they always got a home. And that's the way it is, the Lord. The devil tells us that the Lord will never have compassion. Does a saved need saving sometimes? Absolutely. Amen. This little fella, he needed saved. He needed help. He said, he said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. The father said unto the servants, Bring forth the best robe. He didn't say bring the dirty one in there. He said bring the best. Yeah. He said his father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes off his feet. The world even took the shoes off this little fellow's feet. Whoa. I'm telling you what, right. if we as Christians Don't look for that. help in this world, You'll not find it. Amen. Amen. You'll not find it. This little feather come back home and didn't have nothing to offer his father. 
He just wanted to come back home. I ain't tired. I remember when I was a drug addict, I tried to respect my mommy and, and not come home high. I would wait, David. I would wait. I would wait. I'd go up the hill and look, and I'd see her light still on. And I'd be so tired. I mean, I, I, I was a good drug addict. I mean, I was high. I couldn't quit. I couldn't get enough. But I'd go up top of the hill and I'd see her light still on, and I'd go back down there and say it, and, and to say it, and say it. And I'd climb back up that hill, and finally, her life would be out. She would be gone to bed, so I'd end to wake in. Uh, look, uh, walk in her house looking like I did. And they would always be something fixed for me to eat. Come on, That's just like the Lord, children. I mean, there ain't no one of us don't make a mistake or, or don't need saving sometimes. Amen. Let me read on. And, and he said, bring here to the fatty calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. He was hungry. Ain't nothing worth I tell you, at these times, my baby, especially Natalie, she likes to eat like her daddy. And there'd be times that she'd say, Daddy, I'm hungry. Or I'm hungry. Ain't nothing no worse than sometimes you fix up eat and she's done fell asleep. That makes me feel awful to know that one of my babies went to bed hungry. Amen. I'm telling you, Lord, don't want us to go to bed hungry. That's right. I mean, you said the one is for his people, that loves his people, that don't want his people to feel like they can't come home. Right. Amen. No matter what shape we get in. He wants you to know that we can come back home. He said, for this, and this is what he said, for this is my son was dead and is alive again. He said, he was lost and he is found. Amen. And we began to be married. I'm telling you, children, as Christians, we get a word from the Lord, but we can come back home and we can be married again. Listen right here. This is a lot of times we forget. Now, but listen right here. This is the other type of the church. He said the elder son was in the fields and he came and drew near to the house and he heard muskets and dancing and he called of the, uh, called of, of the servant and asked what things meant. He said unto him, Thy brother has come and thy father hath killed the fatty calf because he hath received him safe and sound. Amen. And, I, and he was angry. Listen to this. Does the saving need saved? And he, and he was angry. And when it would not go in, therefore came his father and he entreated him. And he answered him, said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress at any time thy command. And yet thou never gavest me a kid and maketh me merry with my friends. Listen to what his father. This is a, this is a father being a father. This is a father being like to you two kids. A lot of times your kids is uh, totally different. And this kid was got a little wild, but, but you always had this other kid was always good. Never never caused no trouble. And this is what he told him. He said this, uh, this uh, uh, as soon as this son was come, the fire, uh, 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 the fire not living and has the living at heart. Uh, so let me get where I'm at. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I uh, do I, I serve thee? Neither transgress at any time thy commandment, and, and thou never gavest me a kid that might make me merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come and hath devoured his living with a harlot, thou hast killed the fatty calf. Amen. And he said to his son, listen to what he said to his other son. He said to him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. He needs saving. This little feller did. No, he didn't get out in the world, but he needs right. saving. Because he's, uh, I mean, if we can't be happy when we get one of our people that comes back home, hey, we need to be saved. Right. We need to be helped. Hey, man, this was a feller that he never went nowhere. He never done nothing wrong. But he let the devil come in and cause him not to be merry with his father and his brother. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on, help me. He said, the son don't are ever with me. And all that I have is thine. Listen, what a father. Man, ain't this a father right here. He said, I was meet. He said, I was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this is thy brother was dead and is alive again. And was lost and is found. This fellow needed help just like his brother needed help. Amen. 
I'm going to read you something right here. I mean, I've, been, I've always preached about it, talked about it, read it, and saved. You know what the definition of being saved is? Uh, saved. He's to preserve from injury, destruction, over evil of any kind, to rescue from danger, and to save a house from the flames, to save a man from drowning, to save a family from ruin, to save, to save a state from a war, to preserve from uh, final and everlasting destruction, to, to rescue from eternal death, to deliver, to rescue from the power of the pollution of sin. On, Amen. I'm going to bring out something a little bit. Uh, uh, again, another familiar scripture, if I could. We all know it. St. Matthew 20, you ain't got to turn, 14. But the ship was not on the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. Wind was contrary. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus uh, went unto the walk, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear, but straightway Jesus planked unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Listen not here. Peter answered and said, uh, uh, Lord, if it be thy, uh, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee Amen. on the water. And the Lord, and he said, Come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when the ship and the wind was boisterous, the wind uh, the, uh, was afraid and be, began to sink and cried, saying, Lord, save me. Amen. 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 Who was Peter's biggest enemy on the water? Amen. Amen. It was his self. Yeah. Too many times we give the devil credit. I thought your biggest enemy would be yourself from day one. I mean, you, when you get saved, it's starting all over. The Lord began to teach you to live a different way, to walk different, to talk different. There was nobody on that sea that caused Peter to sink. There wasn't nobody that they devil wasn't hurting, jerking down, and no, uh, nobody. Uh, he had no enemies that began to cause him to sink. But Peter took his eyes off the Lord. As Christians, sometimes. You'll never go get you'll never get anywhere if you take your eyes off of him. Amen. The only way we'll ever get, uh, do any count as a Christian is when we keep our eyes on the Lord. Right. And we are but, uh, Peter. Peter walked on the water. He got out and walked. He right. could have kept on walking, but Peter took his eyes off his life. Right. So many times as Christians, we our flesh dug. It's my worst enemy, the flesh. The flesh will rise up against us as, as Christians. On Wednesday nights, the devil will cause you to be more tired than any other night. Amen. Uh, amen. I thought it's so easy to stay home. Man, I'm just so, so tired. I thought if you look for an excuse, it'll always be there. Right. Man, I'm a hurting or, or this. Or, or, uh, if you're looking for an excuse to take your eyes off the Lord, amen, there are plenty of them out there, especially this day and time. But I look at a people, a whole lot of dedicated people. I'm proud of you. But I tell you what, Peter was a saved man. Peter uh, didn't commit no big sin on this water right here. The only thing that he done, Peter got in himself. Amen. Amen. And he needs saving. Amen. Peter needs saving. That's a Christian. One thing we got to learn as a Christian, when we do get in trouble, when we do fall, when we do take our eyes off the yeah, Lord, what in the world do we do? Just like Peter said, he cried out. Yeah. When you get down loud, you need to cry out to the Lord. Right. And if you don't feel what you want to feel at church, Amen. you go home and you cry out. And the Lord said, Lord, save me. I don't know about you, but what I got worth fighting for. I've been a fighting person for 21 years. And I'm a holding on to the Lord. And I found out for 21 years, it wasn't the devil was my biggest uh, uh, trouble. It was done. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I, but I thought Peter was a man. I, could, I couldn't walk on water. I don't guess. I can't even swim. But this was a man. Ask the Lord. Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And the Lord said, come on, Peter. Come on out of that boat. 
Lord, oh Peter, could you imagine walking on water? But he took his eyes off the Lord. I thought it they ain't nothing no worse when you go to church and pride gets in your way as uh, when you come to church and we know where we ain't where we ought to be. And old old preacher gives an altar call. And we're afraid of what people might think of us. Amen. Amen. We're afraid. But Lord, I know I need to go to that altar. And I know I don't need to go home without praying. But I will sit there. We'll talk to ourselves. And ourselves will talk us out of going to the altar. Doug will talk his spiritual self out of going to the altar. And we lead worse than we come before. Then we got to go Thursday with, uh, without uh, getting any help from the Lord. Right. Hey Amen. Then Friday, it just gets worse. It's a snowball effect. It's going downhill. But I thought how good it is when we give in and we let the uh, Spirit have its way. Right. And we come to this old altar. We kneel down and say, Lord, save me. i tell you, through 21 years, D, I've had to cry out to the Lord a lot. And amen. And the devil is always there. He won't. Make, he can't make me. He can't make me do nothing. He can't make me fall. That's like Adam and Eve. The devil did not make the meat that day. Eve chose to. Eve chose rather to give her flesh what it wants. And when you give your flesh what it wants, I can promise you, it ain't never no good for us. Amen. Is when we give in that flesh. The Lord comes to save us. Just like this old prodigal son. Now you might not have been out in this world of drinking, fighting, and cussing. All these different things. But from service to service, we can get away from the Lord. From service to service, we can get a little cold on the right. Lord. Amen. Amen. And the same needs saving. No matter how old you get in this. No matter how far that you've been with the Lord or how close that you did. There'll come a day when you take your eyes off the Lord. Right. Mamma's done it. Papa's done it. Mommy's done it. We've all done it. And they need right. sight. We need sight. But we got to cry out. This is worth fighting for, serving God. It's right. worth right. fighting for. Peter thought it was worth crying out for. Lord, save me. And so many times that the devil causes us, the Lord uh, well, is going to do this to the Lord. Gonna, I thought that little prodigal son was a shame. I'm telling you, it was a shame for what he'd been, where he'd been at, what all he'd done. Yeah, and he just right. wanted to go home. Amen. He just wanted to go home. Yeah. The Bible says, Father saw it. He'd been looking for him. Yeah. If you have been away from the Lord, see, I don't know you, and I don't know your heart today. I don't know if you've been away from the Lord. You ain't doing what you used to do. You ain't singing. You ain't preaching. You ain't prophesying. You ain't listening to God. So chances are you've been away from God. You might have not took everything that you had and went out in this world and spent it all like this little feather done. But you've been away from the Lord. You ain't studied. You ain't read like you should. You've been away from the Lord. You need to be saved. Amen. From what state that you're in tonight. You need to, well, I thought sometimes if we ain't thinking right as a Christian, how hard it is serving God. And this little feather started thinking right. He said, how many hired servants yeah, in my father's house had yeah, bread enough to spire? Spire had plenty. He said, I'm starving to death. I'm telling you what this people in this world, people in Harlan County, all over this world is starving to death. Amen. They're starving to death. Amen. They use this sickness kind of like a they use this sickness kind of like a snow day, you know? A chance to stay home. That's right. Yeah. Amen, true. Look, yeah, I thought, Lord, have mercy. I thought if we if I'm a preacher, how bad that it would be if we come to church and proud, Blake, or me didn't have something for you. Something. How would that make you feel? Oh, it would be awful. Oh, we could use this for excuse. We better not go. We're gonna get sick. We're gonna get somebody else sick. It's like a pastor. I can't remember. I can't. I can't begin to imagine what goes through his head and all the things the devil puts there and you know this or that. I thought. I thought. I remember just like you yesterday, Blake, when we went out there and had that meeting before they shut the church down. And I still not remember. Brother Travis said. He said. He said I can't stop church. He said I can't call it off. 
He said, because I know he said, there's some here that won't make it back. Amen. That's true. Is that not to be found to be true? Yeah. Amen. It was true. There's some people that I thought would have never stayed home, would have never, you know, uh, not come back to church. But I thought, children, what you got with the Lord is worth fighting for. Amen. What you got with the Lord is worth coming back to the Lord. I thought, I thought as a daddy, I thought there's been many times that I, many times I've, I've, had, I've picked myself up because I know that i got people depending on me. Right. Not on the church, but i got two little girls oh. that's looking to me what to do when they get in trouble. Right. Amen. 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 They seen their daddy mess up. They ain't their, I, I, they see me mess up. They say, I, I, you know, but I thought, uh, I want them to know. I want, I, I try to live a life in front of them. I tell you, I'm in, I'm in love with the Lord, children. I have. I've been in love. I've, uh, and through the years, I've loved the Lord. But when I've been out, I just love the Lord. I get in trouble. But when I know that I'm still uh, uh, head over heels with Him, I do all right. Because I remember, the Bible says, no, I can't remember to quote that scripture right. But have a, you know, when the Lord delivers, uh, 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 I thought I had that scripture up. Uh, those the Lord delivered for much, they like he called it. They, they, they them that love Him the most. I ain't saying you don't love the Lord, but I know where I come from. I sat in a church. I was high as I could be. I was. I try to be good at whatever I'm doing. If it's raising hogs, being you know, I try to be good at. It. I try to do the best that I've ever been doing. I was a good sinner. I was good at doing drugs. I was so good at it. But I sat there one day, and a preacher preached to me, and I give my life to him. I remember. Coming up that aisle, I remember where I got down. And I remember letting him getting on laying beside me, putting his arm across me. He said, are you saved? I said, no, I'm not. He said, do you want to be saved? He began to lead me in a sinner's prayer. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. I felt a change. I mean, I felt like I was changed when I left there. I mean, I cried from the time I left there. I remember getting up the next day. I remember I was faced with a trial right off. I walked outside, the sky was bluer and the grass was greener. I was a different man, but I thought I fell in love with Jesus. He delivered me from a life of sin, and now through the years, I've failed him many times. But I'm afraid to let go, I'm afraid to quit. I'm afraid to let them words come out of my mouth and I'm a quit. Because once them words come out of your mouth, the Lord can't help you no more. You have got the prayer of prayer of a repentance to get the Lord to help you. Amen. This little pillar needed help. He said, I know what I must do. As Christians, we know what we must do. Amen. He don't take a very experienced Christian. The Lord will teach you right off the bat how to repent. Amen. He said, I know what I've got to do. And when we get down and out, when I can't feel the Lord, I know what I've got to do to feel Him. I know how to get a hold of the Lord. He's taught me what to do. Amen. This little fellow, how many times in a Christian life do we say, I know what I've got to do. I've got to go back home. You can still be here. And you can still be away from God. You can come to church every day. And you still can get cold on the Lord. Why? How? If you don't obey the Lord, you don't seek the Lord. If I'm a preacher and I don't ever find myself a praying and seeking God, how in the world I ever expect to feed you? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, we need help. Amen. You might need help the next day after you've been saved. Amen. For all the years that you serve God, you have to learn to cry out to Him. You have to learn what to do when you get in trouble. Amen. It ain't one strike, two strike, three. You're out with the Lord. As long as you want help, the Lord will always help you. Amen. He didn't say, Peter, what in the world was he thinking? Come on, he didn't question Peter. He didn't get a switch out and whoop him. The Bible says immediately he stretched him out and got him. Amen. Amen. This was a man just walked on water. Now we sunk. Amen, children. We can be shouting one Sunday and struggling the next. I'm telling you, we live in a real world and we face a real enemy that's got real powers. 
Right. He's got a whole lot of people that's a working for him, amen. Right. And we might be doing today, good, doing good today, but we might need the Lord to save us before Wednesday. Amen. amen. You've got to learn to ask the Lord to help us. Lord, help me. When the worst we get in trouble is when we think we can get ourselves out of trouble. Hey, man, right. have you ever been there? Yeah. What if Peter would have let pride keep him from saying, now the Lord was right there. I believe he could, and when it, as soon as he started sinking, he believe he looked at him. But what if Peter says, I'm going to get myself out of this trouble? Oh, Lord. How do we make things worse? Hey, man. Right. When we can just cry out to the Lord, Lord, help me. Amen. It's me again, Lord. It's Doug. And I am in trouble again. I am in trouble again, Lord. Amen. I read in the Bible where the Lord's and mercies are renewed every morning. Every morning we can start all over with Him. Amen. I preached at Irene parties the other night about starting all over with the Lord. Amen. There's times that we get up as a Christian, we need to find us a prayer closet an altar somewhere, a rock on a river bank, get in the mountain somewhere and give the Lord time. And these times we just need to start all over. And I'm telling you, the Lord loves it when we want to start all over again. Hey Amen. Ain't nothing no greater when my babies come to me and they is something that I can help them with. That I can do it. Would I ever hold back anything for my children? I ain't the whole way. I don't care. How bad when they win, they steal my babies. The Lord feels the same way about you. As long as you want help, He will always be here. Amen. You might not be a shout every Sunday. You might have to drag yourself in here. Amen. But thank God, when that altar called, my pastor preached a message one time, and I couldn't wait to get in that altar and ask the Lord to help me. Amen. Lord, I need your help. I might not do any much on what the tomorrow. I might be doing all right. But I might be doing all right the next day. But I sure might need the Lord before Wednesday gets here. Right, I love you. To, to preserve from injury, destruction, or evil or any kind. To rescue from danger. Hey man, I tell you it's dangerous as a Christian. Not to call out on the Lord and ask you for help. Amen. Hey man, how in the world these people come to church like Mamma Old Eddie been saved for 60 years, 62, uh, 66, 24, 24, way up her. And I can imagine she's cried out to the Lord a many a time. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, hey man, hey man, when my children get in trouble and they can't feel the Lord like they want to. Lord, you got to cry out. Amen. I thought you got to get in your prayer closet and begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to ask Him to help you. I'm telling you, this old prodigal son, as a daddy being, I can see him. Out and rusty and dirty. He might have been plumb naked when he come back home. I don't know. But could you imagine seeing this little fella come back home? Old rusty gave Mark coming back home. His hair messed up and Lord, that is a shame to see what this world does to a Christian. Amen. Hey, man, I'm preaching good tonight. I can feel that. I know where I need to be. Hey, man, what you look what a Christian used to be. And you go to Walmart and you see them what, uh, uh, what they uh, just been out of this world. And they sure don't look like they are too. Hey, Amen. Sure this world will take everything for you, the devil. If you give him an inch tonight, he will take a mile. I don't, I don't get nobody to fall out with me, but I'll give you an example. One time, uh, we've all heard this, and you and I have thought about uh, The Lord convicted me of short sleeves a long time ago when I was going to a Baptist church. I just feel like I need to be covered up, okay? Uh, and and, and not, nobody, nobody else, don't you get mad at me. Uh, but I thought I, I, one time my button busted on my sleeve. And, and look how the Lord showed me something. Amen. Boy, I, can tell you, I look for a I, Hey, girl, how hard is it to find a ball of tape in the mind? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. I could not find nothing. I was going to take my sleeve. It was bothering me. Every time I reach up there, that thing would go way up my arm. 
Hey, when the Lord convicted me, He don't want them up here. He wants them down here. Amen. Hey, man, I looked and looked. I thought, and the devil began to fight me. I said, tell this other preacher. I said, take me fine. i got to find some tape somewhere. And I thought, he said, what's going on? I told him, he said, just cut them off. I, I said, I can't cut them off. Hey, man, if I give the devil an inch that day, he'll take a mile. He takes these little things from Christians, things we give up. And if he takes a little bit at a time, when he gets that from him, the next day, he'll take a whole lot more from you. Right. Amen. The, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. And I believe that uh, I believe when the Lord puts something on you, you ought to not let nobody take it off of you. Amen. What if I had cut them off that day? What would I have been doing the next day? And the next day? Amen. When the Lord convicts us of something or, or teaches us something, it's important that we keep that. It's important that we keep that with the Lord. I'm telling you, but I love you tonight. If you feel like praying, you pray and you see. But if you feel like getting this altar and pray, you get in this altar and pray. I'm telling you, there ain't a one of us that won't need saving from time to time. Amen. 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 It's time to come to church and Amen. See, me these times I come with my Bible on my arm, my chest stuck out. Amen. Just doing everything that I know to do. Where I'm supposed to be with the Lord. But these times I've had to drag myself to church. Amen. Amen. These times and I thought, Lord, I ain't going to make it another mile. Yeah. But I tell you what, I've cried out to Him. And the Lord helped me. And if I live 20 more years, if the, Lord, if the world goes that far, I'll still be crying out to the Lord, Lord, help me. Until the day He comes back, then I won't need no more help. We won't need no more help then. It's important to a church, as a, as a church, to be seeking God. Because the Lord might use us to help somebody tonight. We might have to be the Lord's arm. You ever thought about that? Amen. We might have to be the Lord's mouthpiece. If I ain't a study, how in the world could I be his mouthpiece? How can I be there? I thought these time we we I thought I love you didn't have a whole lot. But I thought Peter, this was a man who could walk on water, and I don't know if anybody here could walk on water. If he could sink. If he could take his eyes off the Lord, where the world does that leave us? If a man like Peter, the Peter's shadow could heal people. Amen. Peter was a great man, but he took his eyes off the Lord. But he teaches us something very important right there. He teaches us to cry out to the Lord. He said, Lord, save me. Tonight you might be saved, but you still might need saving. And whatever trouble that you're in tonight, whatever state of mind that you're in, the Lord can help you. The Lord will always come to your rescue. But we have to do our part. What was Peter's part on the water that day? He had to cry out. I don't know if the Lord would have let you and got him if he didn't cry out. I don't know that. I can't answer that. But I tell you what, I ain't about to take that change. I ain't about to take that change. I'd like to think that the Lord would have reached that iron and grabbed him anyhow. And he probably would have. But I know what Peter said, Lord, save me. Tonight, if you ain't where you are to be with the Lord, you need saving. You need help. You need help tonight. People of God needs help. As Christians, we need help. We need to help one another. Tonight, somebody sang us a song. As we sing a song, find you somewhere to pray. And if you ain't where you are to be with the Lord, ask the Lord to help you. Lord, save me. Save me, Lord. Come on and pray.